Good evening. It's 8 o'clock. The top headlines tonight. The West Bengal Chief Minister's leg in a cast. Her video message from hospital appealing for calm. She says she's got frontal headaches, injured in her leg, but will campaign in a wheelchair if needed. Today, however, in her message, she doesn't mention an attack, a conspiracy, saying her foot instead was crushed by crowds. However, the TMC asks why the Prime Minister is silent with the Chief Minister in hospital. The BGP, meanwhile, goes to the EC, saying show video evidence of the attack. Very worried about Maharashtra, rise in cases, says the centre, as the Maharashtra Chief Minister gets vaccinated and warns of the possibility of another Lockdown, the top four districts in COVID cases in India are from Maharashtra. Meanwhile, Delhi crosses 400 cases today, the highest in two months. This, of course, as thousands gather at the first Shahi Snan of the Kumbh. Denmark and Norway suspend the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The two countries raise concern over apparent blood clot issues. The United Kingdom says it's clear that AstraZeneca is safe and effective. Remember, in India, this is one of our two approved vaccines as Covishield here. India is not a democracy, tweets Congress leader Rahul Gandhi. This is a Swedish group report, changes the rating of India from democracy to elected autocracy. But moving to what really is the lead story, and this is the fact that a 66-year-old chief minister, India's only woman chief minister, is currently still in hospital. She released a video message from hospital appealing for calm, saying she will be back on the campaign trail soon. She'll campaign in a wheelchair if needed. Pictures showed her leg in a cast. Today, in her video message, she didn't mention an attack or conspiracy. However, she did talk about the crowds and the pressure on her foot, as we see, her foot is in a cast. Meanwhile, the Trinamool has gone to the Election Commission asking for a full inquiry. They also said separately, why is the Prime Minister silent on this? Meanwhile, the BJP also goes to the Election Commission saying, show video evidence of this attack. <laughs> A call for calm by Mamta Banerjee to Trinamool workers out on the streets protesting the incident at Nandigram yesterday. She has also promised to be back at work soon. Yesterday she had said at Nandigram that four to five men had attacked her, that it was a conspiracy or sajish and that it was an intentional attack. Today, no mention of that. And the BJP claims the Trinamool chief has now toned down her charge because she knows it won't stand scrutiny. If you've been uh, assaulted by someone, of course we would uh, be concerned about it. But you can see the kind of facts that are coming out. Uh, nobody seems to have seen the attackers. And there are all kinds of uh, contrary uh, eyewitness uh, statements coming out. But, uh... but the Trinamool is far from backtracking. They have written to the Election Commission accusing the BJP of conspiracy to kill Mamta Banerjee, a brazen attempt on her life, they have said. Hard questions have to be answered and those responsible for this heinous incident need to be brought to book. There is more. 12 Trinamool MPs will meet the Election Commission at 12.30 in Delhi tomorrow, demanding a probe into the incident. And one of the things they will try debunk is the theory that the door of the Chief Minister's car accidentally hit some pillars on the road, which slammed the door against her, causing injury. Four, five people forcibly closed the door. And that's when she got badly hurt. But the BJP is not letting go of their claim that it was all stage managed. They too have demanded that the election commission probe the incident and expose the truth. Mamta Banerjee lying in a hospital bed looking frail, looking pale, is a powerful image in this election season. And both the Trinamool Congress and the BJP know it as these two rivals 
fight it out for Bengal, the danger is election commission may get caught in the middle of it. With Andrew Tripathi, Monadipa Banerjee, NDTV. Let's look at a video that has emerged off last night, which is a top angle, which shows some uh, details of what happened as the Chief Minister's motorcade arrived there at Nandigram. We can see these are the moments before Mamta Banerjee got injured. You can see the crowd surging around her car. She is standing on that uh, footboard, the crowd running along with the Chief Minister's car. She says also in her video message about how the surge of the crowd, the push of the crowd is what led for her to injure her foot. Also, Saurabh Gupta has this ground report from Nandigram. A massive crowd around the Chief Minister's vehicle. As she stood on the footboard to acknowledge the crowd before getting into the seat, the crowd suddenly surged around the bonnet. Mamta Banerjee briefly stood on the footboard of a vehicle last evening to acknowledge the crowd gathered here. A common practice amongst politicians when the car is moving slowly. At that time, the crowd surged around the vehicle and that's when the doors slammed on her. The Trinamool Congress says the crowd surge and the resultant slamming of the doors was a premeditated conspiracy to hurt her. While some eyewitnesses agree, some say the incident was a result of poor crowd management. Krishna Jana, a Trinamool supporter, was present. He says the door was half open and the chief minister was surrounded by her personal security while acknowledging the crowd from the footboard. <laughs> The BJP and the Congress were quick to call it a political stunt. BJP later claimed it was an accident caused by this pole in the middle of the road. What caused Mamta Banerjee's serious injuries? Was it this pole as the BJP initially claimed? Or was it the crowd surging around the front of her car leading to the doors being slammed on her hips and waist as she stood on the footboard to acknowledge the crowd? Only a probe will establish exactly what happened, but the ugly political back and forth since the incident is vitiating the political atmosphere in Bengal further. In Nondigram, with Monidhi Babanaji and camera person Habib Ali, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. So different versions going out. We've seen whether it's an attack, accident, but the indisputed fact remains that we have a chief minister in hospital. And what's interesting is who has reacted and who hasn't. The TMC has pointed out that the prime minister hasn't said anything about Mamta Banerjee being in hospital. Neither has the home minister. Also, interestingly, neither has Congress President Sonia Gandhi or Congress leader Rahul Gandhi. This is the state Congress President Adhir Ranjan has said this is all made up. It's all drama. But two Congress chief ministers, Ashok Gehlot and Amrinder Singh, have tweeted sending their best wishes for her recovery. So there are people who spoke in favor of Mamta Banerjee, those who spoke against Mamta Banerjee, but those who were conspicuous by their silence. That list too is very, very long. Let's quickly take a look at that list. It starts with the Prime Minister, Nared Modi, who has remained silent as far as uh, any response on Mamta Banerjee's attack or accident. Amit Shah, the Union Home Minister, silent, has not spoken. No tweet, no comment so far on Mamta Banerjee. Sonia Gandhi, the Congress interim chief, has not spoken a word. We know Adi Ranjan Chaudhary is speaking against Mamta Banerjee, but there are some supporting her also in the Congress. But Sonia Gandhi is silent. So is Rahul Gandhi. Since yesterday, no tweet or no comment from Rahul Gandhi of the Congress party. So you can see that the top two of these two parties have not spoken. The BJP chief, JP Nadda, has not spoken as far as Mamta Banerjee is concerned. Remember, he too was attacked. Uh, at that time, Mamta was extremely critical. Nitish Kumar, let's now take a look at the Chief Minister. Nitish Kumar, the Chief Minister of uh, Bihar, silent. Next, ML Khattar of Haryana, silent. Next, let's take a look at the next uh, person, Jairam Thakur of uh, Himachal Pradesh. 
he has chosen to remain silent as far as this issue is concerned. Yogi Adityanath, Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, has remained silent. B.S. Yedurappa, the Chief Minister of Karnataka, is also silent, has not spoken anything. But now, it seems that there are more and more voices that are uh, emerging who are speaking on this issue. Let's now quickly take a look at all those who have spoken in favor of Mamta Banerjee. So we've got Ashok Gelo, the Chief Minister of Rajasthan, who says those behind this must be caught and punished. Let's take a look at the next slide. Who else has spoken? We have, This is a long list of people who have spoken. Captain Amrinder Singh of Punjab, uh, he says, disgusted to read the attack on West Bengal Chief Minister. Uh, Tejasvi Yadav in, from Bihar, in fact, he's also spoken, says, unequivocally condemned the cowardly and despicable attack on Mamta Banerjee. Omar Abdullah and Farooq Abdullah both have spoken. Uh, they say that the rough and tumble of election campaign should not descend into physical violence. Uh, Arvind Kejriwal, the Chief Minister of Delhi too, has spoken. He says, I strongly condemn the attack on Mamta Didi. M.K. Stalin, let's go down south. M.K. Stalin uh, he says, shameful attack on Mamta is an assault on Indian democracy. Uh, this list also goes on. There are many other leaders also who have spoken uh, from uh, across the country. But again, the list of those who haven't, fairly long. So a political divide here as well. But let's go across now to the other big headline we are following. And that really is that India's cases inching up again. Also a dip in India's vaccinations in the last two days. What's the latest, Rishika? Well, absolutely. Sonia, you're absolutely right. The numbers are rising once again. That's a worrying story. But this is uh, the even more worrying story at the moment, because if you look at India's coronavirus vaccination tally, we'd reached 20 lakh vaccinations uh, two days ago. And for the last two days, we have stagnated at around 13 lakh vaccinations per day. We pose this question to the health ministry. They say this isn't a competition and India's pace of vaccination is still very competitive if you compare it on the global scale. But the other big story that we're tracking from the world of vaccine is that the AstraZeneca vaccine has currently been suspended in Denmark, Norway, and also we are just learning of it being suspended in Iceland as well. The health authorities are raising concerns over blood clots that are being caused as a result of the vaccine. We will continue to track this story very closely, but let's just shift our focus right now to the COVID-19 cases. Highest daily cases in over two months. So this is a worrying number right here. There are 22,854 cases in the last 24 hours. This is a rise as compared to yesterday. There were uh, 17,921. If you do the math, it is a 27% uptick in just the last 24 hours. So this is a worrying story. But what are the states that have contributed to this number? Maharashtra clearly 13,600 cases in 24 hours, followed by Kerala, Punjab, Karnataka, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. 86% of the new cases are being reported just from these six states. Let's take a look at the district-wise data. Eight of the 10 worst hit districts in the country are from Maharashtra. Let me just look at these numbers. Top 10 districts in terms of active cases, you have Pune, Nagpur, Thane, Mumbai. Top 4 from Maharashtra again, Bengaluru, Urban, Ernakulam again, Amravati, Jalgaon, Nasik and Aurangabad. These are all from the state of Maharashtra as well. So that's of course uh, a story we we'll track. A lot of these districts now are seeing restrictions. But another important point that I want to highlight tonight is the states that are reporting a sudden surge. Delhi, Madhya Pradesh, Telangana, West Bengal and Chhattisgarh. And Delhi, if we just look at Delhi, a 400 cases being reported in the last 24 hours. So these are the states uh, that are showing a sudden surge and we will keep a close watch on. Thanks, Rishika. So as uh, all the doctors, all the health experts have been warning, the COVID pandemic is not over. Today, the Maharashtra Chief Minister Udhav Thakare got vaccinated, also vaccinated as Tamil Nadu's Chief Minister K. Palanaswamy. He received Covaxin. Also, Chief Minister Udhav Thakre, whose state is now battling a resurgence of cases, said that there may possibly be another lockdown in Nagpur. There's already been announced a lockdown. Very worried about Maharashtra. Across several districts of Maharashtra, you saw their names. We learned that there is a strict lockdown being imposed in Nagpur in particular. So we are reaching a situation where those approaches are being brought back. It's a very serious matter. After Maharashtra topped the chart in rising COVID cases, 
with over 13,000 cases in last 24 hours, a stern warning from the CM. This after a one-week lockdown, starting March 15, was announced in Nagpur, which saw a rise of nearly 1,800 cases in last 24 hours. मैं पिछले वक्त कहा था कि लोगों ने खुद का स्वास्थ्य अच्छा रखने के लिए खुद पर ध्यान केंद्रित करना चाहिए और मुझ पर ऐसी कोई आपत्ति ना लाई जाए कि मैं शहर में लॉकडाउन कर सकूं लेकिन कल की स्थिति न देखने के बाद आज मुझे यह कठोर निर्णय लेना पड़ रहा है Maharashtra continues to see a surge in cases. Mumbai recorded over 1,500 cases, highest single-day jump in last five months. However, civic body BMC ruled out an immediate lockdown, but stricter measures like night curfew, micro-containment strategy might be on the cards. In last seven days, state added over 70,000 cases with an average of 10,000 daily cases. Pune, which is under night curfew till March 14, added between 1,500 to 1,800 cases daily. Thane is adding nearly 300 cases every day despite lockdown in containment zones. Ahmednagar with over 250 cases daily has night curfew in place. Aurangabad, Jalgaon are adding over 500 cases daily. Nashik added over 1,000 cases daily. State government has asked people to follow strict protocols, but despite the number of warnings, laxity from people and some from health officials have put the state at the threshold of another lockdown. With Vinesh Shukla in Nagpur and camera person Sanjay Mandal in Mumbai, this is Purva Chitnas for NDTV. And over the worry about COVID cases rising again, well, look at these visuals, the devout at the Mahakum in Hardwar, Uttarakhand, the first Shahistan. Of course, this is a deeply auspicious occasion, but Again, the COVID pandemic is not over. So these visuals are worrying. Of course, as I said, uh, the devout gathered here for the first Shahi Snan of the Mahakum. Well, in other news, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the OECD, has said India's GDP growth will be the fastest in the world. In their new prediction, they have raised India's GDP estimates, saying India's economy will bounce back to grow at 12.6% the financial year 22. India's GDP growth will be the highest among G20 countries as well. And they've increased India's growth estimate based on what they see as an economic resurgence. But meanwhile, in other news, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi has tweeted that India is no longer a democracy. This is a Swedish group has rated the India now as an electoral autocracy. Let's just look at the details of that report. They've actually downgraded India from the world's largest democracy to an electoral autocracy now, saying, citing muzzling of the media and overuse of defamation and sedition laws as reasons, saying also this report that India and this aspect of censorship is now as autocratic as Pakistan. The report follows uh, Freedom House, a UK-based group's report, downgrading India's status to partly free. There's been no official government reaction yet to this Swedish report.